What is going on, Ive Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about why Dr. Sam Robbins is actually very wrong about intermittent fasting. I should put very in the title. We're going to break down what he said in his video and see why his information is actually false. We're going to talk about all of that in this video. Stay tuned. Now, Dr. Sam Robbins talks about how growth hormone is only increased if you do a five-day fast, and that the studies that are being referenced are a study of a five-day fast that shows an increase of 1,200%. Now, before I continue, if you're thinking to yourself, wait a second, Edward, he's a doctor. He intuitively just knows these things by default. I would recommend you watch two of my video essays, one being The Dangers of Authority Figure, which has nothing to do with intermittent fasting, it's just a video essay on the uh, idea of authority figures, and the other being Why Do People Hate Intermittent Fasting? Both of those will be very insightful if you think that just having an MD, just being a doctor automatically gives them the knowledge of diet and nutrition. But jumping back into the topic, one of my biggest pet peeves is when someone is referencing uh, studies but does not link any of those studies in their description for the audience and for the viewer to actually go in there and look at it for themselves to see what the study design is. Is it randomized? Is it controlled? Is there a crossover element? What are the methodologies of this study that may lead to limitations? Giving your audience the ability to look at the full study, not just the snippets that you're talking about, is very important for transparency related to what you're talking about. Now, the study does show that within five days of continuous fasting, without stopping, just straight fasting for five days, did increase growth hormone by 1,200%. But the study also shows the first day of fasting. And the study also shows the day that the participants ate. It was only six participants, six males, and there's even clear charts to show the pulsation of the growth hormone. And you can see on the day that they're eating, growth hormone is mostly suppressed. And then you can see on the first day of fasting, so about 20 to 22 hours into it, you can see increases in their pulsation. If you go down the line, looking at all the different participants, it is very, very consistent that the growth hormone starts to increase the longer you're fasting. And the reason for this is that growth hormone can increase glucose, so it is suppressed during feeding time. When you're feeding, that's suppressed. Growth hormone is used for children that are having problems with growing, for senior adults that are losing muscle tissue or losing bone density. The thing that growth hormone does is it protects bone, it protects muscle tissue. And the connective biological reasoning for this is because during feast and famine, our bodies had to adapt to that ability to uh, be in a fasted state, try to still get your food, but not lose your muscles because you needed them to get your food, to carry your food, to kill your food, to do all of these things, muscle was needed, so the body adapted to that specific lifestyle. We still carry those traits now. So what human growth hormone actually does, yes, it may not help you build muscle, although there are studies, and I'll link them down in the description, that show that human growth hormone by itself can lend itself to muscle building, and I'll put that down in the description, but of course, more study is needed. But one thing that we do know is that it does help protect muscle, and it does help protect bone. Thus, when you're fasting, you are protecting muscle tissue, and all of this coincides with the body further targeting body fat for energy while you're in a fasted state. Although there are some amino acid protein neogenesis that happens, it takes a long time for that to happen. It takes up to four days. In this study, you see that growth hormone pulsation is increased within the first day of fasting. And I'll go ahead and also link some information below where they took 200 participants and there was an increase of 1,600% in women and 2,000% in men from a short 20 hour fast. So that's a bigger sample size and it's a higher increase in growth hormone. Now the other thing that he mentioned is that cortisol, cortisol increases. So you're actually not losing body fat because your cortisol is increasing. There are no studies in intermittent fasting that show cortisol increases. As a matter of fact, most studies 
that are out there that even look at cortisol with intermittent fasting show that cortisol decreases. There is one study though that shows that cortisol increases and that was a study where they looked at a five day fast and on the fifth day of continuously fasting without breaking it, on the fifth day, that's when cortisol increased, but it didn't increase on day one, two, three, or four of that fast. So keep that in mind, intermittent fasting is it more than a 36 hour fast if you were using an alternate day fasting regimen you might do 36 hours but no more than that so if you're doing intermittent fasting in and of itself you will never hit that range and i'll put the link down in the description for that five day study but i'll also put the link down in the description where it shows with intermittent fasting with actually using intermittent fasting cortisol actually decreases. And I'll put another link in the description that shows oxidative stress reduces when intermittent fasting. Another thing that he said and then didn't say, which is kind of weird, I don't know if anybody picked up on that, but he said that insulin goes up when fasting. And then a few minutes later says that the only reason you're seeing intermittent fasting reducing body fat is because insulin goes down. Nobody takes into account all the other hormones during the times of stress, such as an increase in stress hormones like cortisol, also a decrease in testosterone, increase in insulin levels, it's all due to also, in some parts, less insulin secretion, also improved insulin sensitivity. But trust me, the higher GH levels is not the primary cause. So I'm not sure which one he full heartedly believes in, but he does say that insulin goes up and then he says that insulin goes down. But just to let you know, almost all the studies out there looking at intermittent fasting show that insulin drops. And this is clearly because you are not taking in any glucose and glucose is what increases insulin so yes insulin sensitivity is increased when you're not eating he also further emphasizes your muscle mass being eaten because of the fact that you're fasting for so long and recommends to fast only up to 12 hours when there have been many studies that show that muscle has been retained versus those who just do caloric restriction. There's a resistance train eight week study with males and it shows that muscle mass was retained and body fat was lost with the resistance train males. There's also a clinical trial that was done, 16 clinical trials looking at 16-8 fasting and it showed that the group that did the 16-8 fasting retained muscle while the group that just did caloric restriction lost muscle and this is because things like human growth hormone, things like insulin sensitivity, all of these activated hormones are focused on pushing body fat while also focused on retaining muscle. So muscles actually retain more when you're doing an intermittent fasting protocol. And of course, those will be linked down in the description below. And the last thing that I'm gonna touch on is that he says that don't ever go into a workout, especially if you're doing resistance training without eating, and especially not without eating protein. So this magical time frame of eating before or after your workout has been pushed so many times, but it has been debunked so many times there isn't an anabolic window that is so critical where you have to eat right before you go into your workout or you have to eat right after you go into your workout there is a grace period a big grace period of six hours to seven hours in either direction so if you ate and then six hours later you work out you're still having the same anabolic effect than if you went into a workout without eating and then six to seven hours later you still started eating. It isn't as critical as people try to make it seem. It's much broader. It's much, much broader. So yes, you can go into a workout fasted. Personally, I cannot go into a workout with food in my stomach, not just because of the whole fasted workout and all of that stuff, because I just feel horrible. I feel nauseous. I feel my food moving in my stomach. It did, I can't really do any type of cardio because I'm feeling the food and it's just making me nauseous like I want to throw up. I work out much better on an empty stomach. I'm much more efficient on an empty stomach. When I run my 5K events, I run them on an empty stomach, complete empty stomach, because anything in my stomach is going to make my performance 
worse but everyone's different you might be someone who needs to eat a whole major meal before you go in because psychologically you feel like it's doing something for you i'm fat adapted which means i can use my body fat effectively for energy plus i just feel horrible when i have any food in my stomach when working out and i just want to end on this one note nothing against dr sam robbins he has his platform and he can talk about whatever he wants to talk about i just ask that if anybody is talking about something please put the link in the description so that others can look at it also he is selling a product in his video some sort of magical fat burning product that touches adiponectin touches liptin increases insulin and does this magical process now if you click on that link i was looking for a study backing this um weight loss magical weight loss uh supplement but when i looked into it the study that was there is only on his website that study has not been peer reviewed because it's not in any other website the study was ran by just two doctors and it showed a 42 percent increase in body fat versus the control group it didn't indicate how many people were in the group plus it's the study only exists on his website and not to throw any shade to dr sam robbins but it looks like he was trying to sell his product which is fine uh but with linking the ability to uh go in and look at your product please also link the studies that you are referencing when you are talking about anything related to diet nutrition and health and that is it guys but i do want to go ahead and thank my patrons from my patreon and i'm gonna go ahead and put their names right up here